So I do have, in case you're curious, I turned on this just in time to catch me giving you guys, I'm going to go ahead and give you the practice final exam. So I'm going to answer key for this. Our review is Thursday. We might be able to start reviewing a bit tomorrow. Today's lecture. If I am exceptionally boring, you can look at your practice final, try some of those out. Um, but if there are no questions, I just want to jump into some examples of that crazy stuff we got into last time. I have, uh, let me give you this. This is the direct copy of this. I posted something on Canvas, the example of a matrix. Kind of worked out to solve a system. Does anyone want a copy of that? Hey. Anybody else doing that? Okay. Uh, so I think we'll try an example matrix. Try to solve it. Maybe two. Steal from the book a little bit here. There we go. This matrix. I gave you that matrix. Could anyone translate that back into equation? Go ahead and try to write down uh, what the equations would be related to this matrix. Which equation is the best equation? Hmm? The last one. The last one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's this first row represent? How do you start? Go back. Plus y. Plus six. I love it. There's no z's. And then for x, two y plus three. Five, and then the last dude says y equals negative one. All right. If anything about what we just did is unclear, let me know immediately because we need to be able to go back and forth. We need to understand what that, you know, how to convert from a system of equations into a matrix and, and the other way around. Could you solve it from here? 
in here? What's the, and again, your best equation is the last one, right? What's the second best equation? The first one, exactly, because how do we rank these equations by how many unknowns there are here, right? What situation would you rather be in? One where there's only one unknown or somewhere where there's three unknowns? Oh, of course, where there's only one unknown. I'd rather have less things I don't know, right? Um, so couldn't I, how could I rewrite the first one using information that I know? What, what's the only piece of information I really, really just know? Huh? Say again? Y is negative 1. So how can I rewrite this? 2x minus 1. Right? So you've got to get 2x equals 7. You get a beautiful fraction. Oh, yeah. There could be fractional answers in these equations. And then what's the only thing I'm missing? What's the only variable that I'm missing? Z. How are you going to get Z? Use the only equation that has Z in it, right? It should have Z in it. There it is, Jeff. <laughs> so then you can plug in Y is negative 1 and X is 7 halves, right? Okay, are you guys? Now, when are you going to do exactly this? Uh, <coughs> but again, it's all about converting from one form to another, right? It, uh, sometimes it's easier to solve things if it's in one form versus another form. Okay. So, let's try a full-blown problem. Let me steal one from the book here. Yeah. Uh, or you could just make one up. That could be exciting. Yeah, let's make one up. <coughs> this is exciting. This will work. This will be exciting. Okay, it should work now. Okay. And now you all should know what I'm kind of doing in my head. If you remember what we did last time, right? I start with an answer and I just construct things that are true given an answer. So I already know what the answer is going to be. So just take a second and convert that to an augmented matrix. One, negative four, one, negative six, three, one, negative one, four, negative two, three, five, nine. Okay. So when I put it in matrix form, and again, if you've never really worked with matrices or if it's been a while or whatever, when you're first learning this, it feels like, oh, this is extra shit. But once you get the hang of it, it makes everything so nice and quick. And another thing I want you to realize, we talked about this last week. 
can you imagine if I added one more unknown to these? Like, what if there was a plus w, minus 3w, plus 6w? I would need one more equation, correct? We talked about this last time. So if I want to do it by hand, not with a matrix, I would have to eliminate one letter three times, and then take those with three equations and eliminate one letter twice. I mean, it would be crazy. And then if, what if I add three more variables? I'd have to add three more equations. Holy shit, right? But if in the matrix, I'm trying to make zeros. And when I make a zero, that's awesome because I've killed the variable, correct? Who cares how big this gets? I just keep doing the same thing. So a matrix makes it much easier to solve a system of equations, no matter how big that system gets. Plus, it's really simple to uh, program this into a computer. And maybe, I don't know if you guys really do understand. So some, can somebody tell me, which, where do you want to start? Which column do you want to start with? One, two, or three. Which one? And again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to make what? Zeros. zeros. I love it. Because when we make zeros, we kill the variable. Why must variables die? They must die. Because they're unknowns, right? If I kill a few, I can figure out the identity of the survivors. And then I can kind of work backwards, right? Now, this is not a life lesson, kids. Right. Don't go out there in the world and say, my professor said to kill people so I can get to know things. No, 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 I did not say that. Okay. So which column, one, two, or three, do you want to, it doesn't matter. The third one? Yeah, why do you want to start there? These cancel immediately, right? Okay, I love it. So how do you make these cancel? What do I have to do to make them cancel? Yeah, exactly, so I'm gonna add Row one and row two, where do I want to put the answer? Does it, it sort of doesn't matter, but we have to pick a place to put the answer. Sure, all right, let's put the answer row one. I love it. Good gas. Now let's see if I can get you guys, I'm going to start to incorporate some more shortcuts here, right? This one's not that, this one's not bad at all. I don't have to do anything here. I just, I'm just adding them directly. So one plus three. That's crazy. Negative four plus one. Holy shit. One plus negative one. And then negative six plus four. And then everything else would stay the same, but I want to do one more thing. Okay, let me see if you guys are cool with this. Uh, don't I want a zero to show up here also? Do you guys remember what is the goal? What is the goal with this chunk, this body of it? What do I want this to end up looking like? Yeah, if I can make it look like diagonal ones, I can just read off the answers, x equals blah, y equals blah, z equals blah. You guys see that? So it's, this happens so often in mathematics. We have this problem, it's gross. It takes forever, holy shit. Let's make a whole new approach, sort of like synthetic division. Let's make a new thing that only focuses on what's important so it really reduces the amount of writing and work I have to do. Right? That's what math people are all about. Okay. We're really lazy or we're frugal with our time. Okay. So watch this, watch this. Um, I'm not going to write the other two yet. So I want this to be a zero, don't I? How can I make this a zero? And be careful. Remember, there's row one. It's changed. I want to do it between these two now, right? How do I make this become a zero? What do I want to do with this row? So that when I add these together, that's a zero. Multiply this row by five. You guys see that? If only there was a negative five there, wouldn't these cancel? Yeah. Okay. So, so. The only downside to matrices is it takes a while to write them. So if I could start to show you how you don't have to rewrite the damn matrix so many times, this process will actually be quick the way it's supposed to be. So I'm going to do a couple things at once. Let's go ahead and do, so what did you, what did you just say? I have to do what to row two? Five times row two plus row three 
Put the answer where? Where was it we wanted a zero? Say again? O2. O2. Is that a red? No. All right, red, you're off the table. No way. Uh, Did I have to go purple? Kind of sucks. Let me see. I want different colors. So right next to this, five times row two. So what's five times three? Fifteen. Five times one is five. Five times negative one is negative five. Five times four is twenty. I just do that so I don't have to rewrite the whole matrix over and over. So now, let me do what I just told myself to do. What is 15 minus 2? 13. 13. 5 plus 3. Negative 5 plus 5. That does what I wanted to. And then 20 plus 9. 20. And then I get uh, negative 2, 3, 5, 9. Okay. So I'm one step closer, right? I got one column. For the most part, what I want it to be. I really want there to be a, a one here, but then worry about that later. There's too much other crap in the way. All right, now, okay, okay, this will still work. <laughs> what do I, what do I, okay, which column would you like to move to next? Do you see how I'm basically done with this column? I got my two zeros. I don't want to make this a 1 yet, because if I divide by 5, I get a bunch of fractions. So I'm just going to do that later. So which column do you want to move to next? Sure, second one. Why? <laughs> because I can add these together to kill that, right? You guys see that? So if you see what you want to do, write down what you're going to do. So what exactly am I going to do? Row 1 plus... Now, now you gotta make a choice, and it, it, it can actually work either way. Where do I want a zero? Do I want a zero here and here? Yes. So it really doesn't matter. I, I want you to understand this. It really doesn't matter if I put the answer there or there, but I wanna put it there. I wanna put it there. I, and I desperately want you to understand what's happening. Every time we combine rows and we lose something, we make a better equation. Every time I get a new matrix, I want it to be better. So I keep track of the better equations. So I can replace an old equation with the results of what we're doing. Why do you think I might want to put it here? Because then wouldn't this row be done, right? And that's going to become really important. Okay. You guys are really listening. So if I add these rows together and put the answer in row one, let's see what we get. So row one plus row three, four minus two, it's two, that's crazy. Negative three plus three, that does what it's supposed to be. Oh, damn it, Jack. All right, well actually this is good. This is a good teaching moment. <laughs> if I do that, what's gonna happen here? I'm gonna lose my zero, right? Okay, I love it, I love it. So that's kind of nice. I wish I could say that I did it on purpose, I didn't. But do you see how I'm catching myself, right? So, I, okay, okay. So, I'm, all right, why is that bad? This is a bad choice, because what do I not want to lose? Zeros. Because I worked hard to make a zero show up there, so if I'm gonna do that, it's gonna lose a zero. So, shoot, I gotta put the answer in row three instead. So then I don't lose my zero. Okay. All right, let me stop for a minute. It's kind of nice. I wish I would have planned that mistake because it's a good mistake to show. But I didn't, which is almost better. Right? I'm human. I can make mistakes. So I, what I realized was I was going to lose a zero if I chose to do it that way. So I go back and I say, let me not do that. So now I'm going to do 4 minus 2, but I'm going to put the answer in row 3. Negative 3 plus 3, 0 plus 5, negative 2 plus 9, okay, let's see, 13 to 8, 0 to 9, let me rewrite this whole thing so it can sort of reset, all right, so I'll do 
is just one thing at a time there. Okay. Now we have kind of a, a bad situation. Not a terrible situation, but where do I want a zero? Am I done with that second column yet? Okay, where else do I want a zero to show up? I want a zero right there. What's the only thing I have at my disposal to use? This guy, right? Okay. So think of this as an LCD idea. I have to multiply both of these by something so they become something that will cancel with each other. What number can both of these become, of course? 24, you guys see that? So I can't multiply one row by something to make it become the opposite. I, I can't, because they don't work well together. So let's do this. Uh, let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's write, write down what I'm going to do. I'm going to take what I'm going to multiply row 1 by? 8. And what am I going to multiply row 2 by? 3. And I'm going to put the answer where? Row 1. Yeah, I'm going to put it in row 1 because that's where I want the 0 to show up, right? Okay. By the way, there were a couple of choices we made earlier that we could have changed a bit to make this a little bit easier. But I wanted to go off of what you guys saw, just to show you, no matter what you see, you can still work through it. You see how I got to a place where my numbers are kind of gross? Who cares? It's like LCD, right? You guys see that? This is just like the idea of LCD. I want them to be the same, but opposite signs, so that they'll kill each other, right? So let me write next to it, so I don't have to rewrite this whole crazy thing. A times row one, so what's this? A times row one, so what's this? 32, negative 24. Zero, negative 16. Three times row two. 39, 24, zero. Oh shit. 87. 87. You're good, you're good. Okay, maybe. And again, what's important right now, the specific problem we're working on is never important. What's important is what's driving me to do each step that I'm taking, right? Trying to make zeros. That's the most important thing. Ones would be nice, but they're not necessary. I'm making zeros and I didn't have any ones. The most important thing is to make zeros because that's killing variables. Okay. I just want to see people out there save the variables. No, let's kill them. Um, so I'm going to put the answer in row one. So I'm going to do 32 plus 39. 32 plus 39. Oh, 71. Negative 24 plus 24. Zero. Zero plus zero. Zero. Negative 16 plus 87. Oh, what's really good? Why is that so good to see that number? Yeah, yeah. See how you can divide the first row by 71 now? Okay, kick ass. So if you're doing a matrix, two things, two things, guys. Do you see how easy it is to make one little mistake and the whole thing goes to shit? Do you understand that? I understand that also. So what I am looking for when I grade your matrix problem is do you understand what to try to do? So if you do stuff and you get to a point where it's just, it's not gonna get anywhere, don't erase your work, right? You will get, I'll only take a few points off if you do everything right and you make one little mistake. We're all human. I'll forget to put a negative sign. I think last class I made a mistake and I had to go back. Remember that? That's always fantastic when your instructor's like, I don't know what's going on. So that happens to people. But if you don't, if you show me some work and you can show me you know what you're trying to do, I will forgive simple mistakes. Because we all make those. Okay, maybe. What I hate is somebody turns in paper and they've erased everything they've done. And I'm like, I see you did something. I can't give you any points because I don't know what you did. Okay, uh, let's try to do, can we do? No, screw it, let's rewrite everything, let's reset. Uh, so what do I have here? 
Can I just, I guess, can I just divide by 71? Is that cool? Right? Is that all right? You see what I did in row one? Just divide by 71. Is that cool? Okay. Why is that first row so kick ass? I mean, the first column. That's the only column I have left to do, correct? The other two columns have their two zeros in them. This column is so kick ass because I can make one become whatever I need it to be. Okay, so here's what I'm going to try to do two things at once. Um, and I think of this as a laser. Do you see how these zeros aren't going to mess anything up? It's one of the best things, just to have one single one and a bunch of zeros. So what do I multiply by to kill row two? That, that 13 in row two. Maybe 13. Going to multiply row one by what? Kill this. Negative 13. Negative 13. And of course, I'm going to put the answer in row two. That's where I want the zero to show up. How can I kill this two? What would I multiply this by? Plus row three. And put the answer in row three, of course. That's where I want the zero to show up, right? Okay, so let's see. Negative 13th is row one would be uh, negative 13, zero, zero, negative 13. So I get. Zero, eight, zero, negative 13 and 29 makes 16. Oh, that's nice to see. Is everybody cool with that? Is everybody or decently okay with that? And now I do this other thing, negative two times row one. So this would be negative two, zero, zero, negative two, and I add it to row three, zero, Zero, oops, yes, five. Concern me for a second. Five. Five. Yeah, that takes so much ass. And of course, row one just stays the same. So we're basically done. Do you guys see that? What else? Everything okay? So five. Yes? Can we uh, divide by five on row two? Yes, of course, yes. So we're basically done. We just divide row three by five, and we divide row two by. What do you want to be there? A one, so we divide row two by eight. So I'll divide by eight, divide by five, and I'll get one, zero, zero, one. Zero, one, zero, two. Zero, zero, one, one. And I'm happy because that's what the answer is supposed to be. Right? In fact, what is the answer? Can somebody tell me? Stopping here isn't good enough. I need to know that you know what the answer is. What's the answer? X equals 1. Y equals 2. Z equals 1. What's another way to write the answer? Yes. Remember? Plane, plane, plane. Answer is a point in three dimensions. A point in two dimensions has two parts. A point in three dimensions has three. So you can also write this as 1. Two, one. So maybe. Where would that point be? Well, here's the x, y plane, right? Here's one, two, right? X, y, and then z, one. <laughs> so the, the answer would be right here, off the board by one. You guys, would be the z axis is just coming right out at us. That's a third dimension. Believe it or not, there is there are there exists three dimensional graph paper. So you can Google it if you want to. And no, it doesn't. You don't have to put glasses on. It's or whatever, right? It's just the way they do like this. X, Y, and Z, basically. Of course, it's always kind of pathetic when you're trying to draw 3D on a 2D thing, but it does reasonably well. But guess what? I'm not going to make you graph 3D. Don't freak out. Okay. I don't know. Uh, how do you guys feel about this? Does it take a while? A little bit. A little bit of time, right? 
do you see how you're constantly doing the exact same thing, right? Which could drive you crazy, but it should make you realize it's relatively easy. I just keep making zeros, keep making zeros. What's the worst thing that could happen when you're trying to solve a matrix besides you make a mistake? What do you not want to have happen? It happened to us almost. Lose a zero. I never want to lose a zero that I make. Because that's the whole point, is to make zeros. All right, all right, all right, all right. Maybe? Maybe, okay. Um, yeah, real quick. Uh, let me change places here. I need to keep copying this down. I put it over there. Real quick, I want to show you one thing that could happen. And, and let me show you physically what this is all about. Um, let's say my three planes. Remember how this was? One plane was that wall. One plane was the ceiling. And one plane was that wall, right? Where's the answer? The corner point, yes? Is that, does that make sense? It's the one point where all three planes meet. Is that cool? If I have three planes, do they all have to meet at one point? No. What about that plane? Everybody with me? We're surrounded by planes. That plane, that plane, and that plane. Do those two planes even meet at all? Thankfully not. This room, it would suck. Uh oh. Right? <laughs> Hi, Pio. <laughs> no? Nobody gets that? Okay. No, shit. All screen. Okay. Uh, so there's a possibility you'll get something like this happen. Let me just make a quick. Sure. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. This is obviously a little contrived. It's not going to be as obvious. Does anyone see something obviously? crazy about this? Which rows immediately want to have something happen to them? Just so desperately. One and three. So if I add row one and three, and I put the answer in row three, what do I get? Zero? 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 One. And then blah, blah, blah. What's that last row say? Convert it to an equation. What's it say? Zero, right? Zero x is zero y is zero. So zero equals one. Okay, neat. You will see something like that if the physical interpretation of the problem is that plane, that plane, that plane. Something like that. They don't meet at one point. Are you guys understanding? Okay. Okay. You could put it into either row three or row one. I really want this to make sense. If you put the same equation in two spots, you've lost way too much information. I, let me see, how do I say this? Um, excuse me. So, yeah, let's say I had um, one, two, three, four, two, negative seven, eight, 11, uh, one, two, negative one, negative two, negative two, six, right? So what you're asking me is, can I add these together and put the answer not just here, but also put it here, right? Do you see how now I, I have no way, can I kill either one of these? Yeah, I've lost too much information then. You only ever take an answer and put that answer in one place. If you put it in two places, you've lost too much information. Does that make sense? It's a good question. I, I don't blame you. You're like, how do I make this even faster? Why don't I just put the same answer? Well, because then you can't do shit. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to blah, 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 blah. Is 
point of practice? The funny thing is, this doesn't really show up in calculus, right? It shows up later in math study if you do it. We introduce it in pre-calc because we talk about solving equations, so it's a good place to introduce. We want people to be aware that matrices exist. How many sections of matrix stuff did I throw out? A decent amount, didn't I? I made it extra credit, I should say. I didn't throw it out. Why did I feel okay with that? Because you don't really use matrices in calculus. You use them later in math. What type of math? Say again? What type of math? Uh, math 285. And also, math 284, and you could use it in math 280, which is count two, depending on the way you want to do a certain problem. Because if you get a system of equations, you could make a matrix if you want to. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why I didn't feel bad throwing a decent amount of the matrix stuff out, because you don't immediately need it in the next course. And when you, if you are going to get up to 285, which is, uh, or 284, linear algebra, they can sort of review the whole thing, right? I just want you to have some grounding in matrices. Okay. Um, I don't think I've shown you this yet. I didn't show you how to solve matrices in your calculator, did I? Yes? I don't think I did. Say again? This is still chapter 10, I think. Hold on. People always ask me what section I'm in. I'm like, I have no idea. I'm just talking about ideas. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this is chapter 11, for sure. Yeah, we're done with 10, yeah. This is 11 and 6. Say again? 10, 7. Yeah, 10, 8 is now extra credit. So if you want the most recent iteration of the homework sheet, go to Canvas. I've cut down on the homework in chapter 10 and 11, and I've made more sections extra credit. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, this is very recent that this is happening. Okay. I wanted to bring hard copies today, and of course I brought the wrong version. Okay. That's pretty much it for matrices. Let's do something, nobody asked me this question, but do you remember how to do matrix multiplication? Let's try a problem, let's see. I, there's one thing about matrix, matrix multiplication I don't think I said. I did, let's say A is this. the dimensions of this? Two by three, right? It's kind of cool, like a two by four piece of wood. So two by three, and of course that would be three by two. Can I do B times A? What's the dimensions of B? Three by two. What's the dimensions of A? All right, let's make this really, really clear. In order to be able to multiply two matrices, the inner dimensions have to match. Do these dimensions here match? Or is two equal to two? They match. So then I can do this. And the answer will be how big? The answer will be the outside parts. And I'm pretty sure I said that on the handout that I gave you guys. Didn't I give you a matrix multiplication handout? Please tell me it is. I don't know if it is. I think I did. Hopefully, if I didn't, I could bring it next time. Um, in order to be able to do matrix multiplication, these dimensions have to match. Why does that make sense? Well, let me write this down. Here's B, and here's A. How do I multiply two matrices together? I would do this row times that column. Does this match this? Yes, two here, two there, two here, two there. That's why the inner numbers have to match. And the really cool thing is, the answer is gonna be the outside 
dimension. It's going to be 3 by 3. And of course, the really, really cool thing is I've given myself no room. <laughs> but so let's see. Uh, let's try it right here. All right, so I'm going to have a big ass answer. So how does this work? I do 4, 2 times 1, 0. 4 plus 0 is 4. First row, first column. First row, second column. 8 plus 8 is 16. All right, let me stop for a minute. Let me know immediately if you're not sure what's happening. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I do this row times this column. 4 plus 0 is 4. Yeah. This times this one. 8 plus 8 is 16. Oh, okay, I see that. This times this one. Negative 4 plus 10 is 6. So then you do 1 plus 0 is 1, 2 minus 12 is negative 10, negative 1 minus 15 is negative 16. Let me take this away. Let me take that away. Yeah. So it becomes a three-plus remainder? Yes. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1, negative 2 plus 4 is 2, 1 plus 5 is 6. That's kind of cool. You have to, it's a little tiny bit cool maybe. I don't know. It's, not cool. Maybe cool is the wrong word. It, it, it's it's uh it, it, it's uh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, the inner ones match, so it's doable. The outer ones tell me how big the freaking answer is gonna be. I already know ahead of time what to expect my answer to look like. Say again. Outside zone match is fine. Yeah, if this was two by two and two by three, the answer would be two by three. A times B, gap, multiply. Say again? So it was A times B. All right, let's check it. Let's see. Can I do A times B? Let's check. Okay, so if I try to do A times B, how big is A? 2 by 3. 2 by 3. How big is B? 3 by 2. 3 by 2. Do the inner ones match? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. But what is what real quick guys, what is three times four? Twelve. Don't worry, it's not a trick question. What's four times three? What's B times A? This. Is A times B gonna be the same? Yeah. Is it? How big is the answer gonna be? Two by two. So matrix multiplication is not commutative. You guys get that? Yeah. Number multiplication, 7 times 8 is 8 times 7. Of course it is, Jeff. Matrix multiplication, not only do I not get the same numbers, I don't get the same dimensions of the damn thing, right? Take a minute and try to do A times B. So you're just going to write these reversed. It works the exact same way. So I know the answer is going to be 2 by 2, right? So I know what to expect. First row times first column, 4 plus 2 plus 1. 4 plus 2 plus 1. 2 minus 6 is negative 4, minus 1 is negative 5. 2 minus 6 minus 1. What did I just do? So far so good? 
Same, is the exact same idea. Every time you multiply matrix, as long as it's doable, as long as the dimensions are correct, I just take a row and multiply it by an entire column. Zero plus four minus five. Zero minus 12 plus five. I think that's right, is it? So do me a favor real quick. Um, can you please multiply this over here I just made? Three, five, one, two. Multiply it by two, negative five, negative one, three. Noticing anything interesting about that? So let's see, you get six minus five, right? One. Negative 15 plus 15 is zero. Two minus two is zero. Negative five plus six is one. Does that look familiar at all? Is that, remember the goal in when I solve isn't, do I want this as a goal? This is called the identity matrix. It's like the matrix equivalent of the number one. You guys understand? When I multiply two numbers together and I get a one, what do we call those two numbers? Equal. If they're equal, you don't get one. Two times two is four. What do you multiply two by to get one? Say again. If I have the number two, what do I multiply it by to make it become one? A half. Say again. I heard the word. It's the multiplicative. It's the reciprocal, but it's multiplicative. I heard it. Starts with the letter I. Inverse. Yes? These matrices are inverses of each other. Because when I multiply them together, I get what? One. Real quick, real quick. Last thing with matrices, okay? Um, I can tell in your eyes that makes you very sad. But just real quick, uh, if I take that matrix, somebody give me a two by two matrix. Give me a number. Oh. Say again? Four. Four. Somebody else give me a number. Two, somebody else give me a negative number. Negative seven. Negative seven, and then somebody give me a last number. Five. Five. All right, multiply those together real quick. Should be real quick. Noticing something. So 1 times 4 plus 0 times negative 7, that's 4. 1 times 2 plus 0. 0 minus 7. 0 plus 5. What just happened? When I multiply this matrix by this one, this stays the same. What's the only number that does some equivalent? What do you multiply 8 by and it stays 8? One, that's why we call it the identity, right? So that's why this is the identity matrix, because when you multiply by it, it stays the same, just like the number one. Maybe? Okay, all right. I put a few guys to sleep, it's okay, things happen.
that's the last little thing about matrices. So adding and subtracting matrices should be simple. They are exactly the way you hoped they would be. Multiply matrices, not what you hoped, <laughs> but it's just the way it's been defined because it's the way that works the best, uh, believe it or not. And then of course, solving systems of equations. I know, I know, it takes a while. You're not used to it, I understand that. But if you just keep your eye on the goal, it, you wanna make zeros. You wanna do a column and then move to another column, right? If you start to bounce around, that's when you start to lose zeros, and that sucks. All right, so enough review. Let's get some new stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, this has come up at least once. Does anyone know the equation of a circle with radius three centered at Zero, zero. Does, does anyone know what that equation is? X squared plus Y squared. We would not. Yes. Now, real quick, why does that make sense? Can somebody define for me? Um, if I wanted to draw this circle. I know already it's not going to look like a circle. Can somebody define for me every point that's on the circle? Do they all have a certain relationship? Oh my god. Okay. It's not like that's a circle. That is a deflated soccer ball. I'm sorry. Every single point that's on the circle is how far away from the center? Three, right? That point is three away from the center. Holy shit, Jeff. There you go, buddy. That point is three, but that point is there. You're three away from the center. Everybody gets a card, okay. So if I just pick an arbitrary point, you see how I make a little triangle? Oh shit, this looks like a unit circle. Of course it does. Isn't this X? If that's the point X, Y, you guys, really, isn't that X? Isn't this? Why? And isn't this three? So what's the relationship there? Didn't I just make a little right triangle? Can't I do Pythagorean theorem and get this? Isn't that true for any freaking point I pick? That's why this is the equation of a circle of radius three. How would I get one that has radius 16? Oh shit, that's it. How do I get one radius of 25? No, Jeff. How do I get one that has a radius of five? 25, okay. My brain wouldn't stop thinking the other way. No. How do I get a circle? How do I take, all right, let me take this one. How do I take this circle and move it over so that the center is now at five, zero? Oh, shit. Oh, shit, Jeff. What are you doing, man? Say again. No, I like it though, but no. I want to shift it by five. Close, close. What do I want to do to the X? X minus five. Right, when it's in with the X, doesn't it move it left and right? If it was outside, it would move it up or down or stretch it or something, right? So, careful. All right, what if I wanted to Move it so that it's at five, negative two. So I want the center to be at five, negative two. I want the center to be at five, negative two. What would that look like? Well, this is this, correct? I want to move it over five. Then I want to move it down two. So what would I have to do here? Kick ass, right? It's that simple. Oh, look at that, transformations coming in to help me, right? I like it, I like it. Why is this a circle 
because do you see how the x piece and the y piece have the same coefficient, right? They both have a coefficient of one in this case. Are you guys with me? Okay, so let me do one more thing with circles and we'll talk about a squished circle. Can anyone tell me anything about this circle? Maybe we'll do two more things. Uh, Tell me anything about this circle. The center. Yeah, center is negative one, five. Yeah, the radius is nine. Cool. Can you graph this? Shit, yeah. Easy as shit. All right. So negative one, five. I need to give myself more room. Negative one. Oh man, <laughs> of course it's nine, Jeff. Anyway, negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight, negative ten. So negative one, uh, one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. All right, negative one, five. That's the center. It's a little open circle there. And now I want to go. From that, I want to go nine out in all directions. Why did I pick that? I don't know. So if I go nine out in all directions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my one, God, two, three, four. Wait, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So five plus nine is 14, Jeff, good job. If I want to go down nine, that was negative one, so I'll end up at negative 10. And then down nine this way. I think you guys get the idea. Five minus nine is negative four. So then I just have to do my best. Oh my God, my scale sucks so bad. That is a fantastic circle. Your scale. <laughs> so to make your scale better, it won't look like somebody sat on your circle. Not impressed. Okay. Um, all right. Not too bad, right? Circles kick ass. Circles kick so much ass. So, what is a flattened circle called? Like if somebody sat, actually, what does that look more like? <laughs> Say again? Oval? Sure. What's another name for it? It's like the orbit of the Earth around the Sun is actually not circular. Does anyone know what it is? Starts with the E. Elliptical. Elliptical, right? So an ellipse. So what's the what's the main difference between an ellipse and a circle? Can anyone tell me what's the main difference between an ellipse and a circle? How far does a circle get from its center? The same amount every direction, right? What about an ellipse? What's different about an ellipse? It gets further from the center in one direction than the other. Is that cool? So to make it not symmetric, I'll do something like this. So this is a circle, right? Right, that's a circle. Why do I know it's a circle? Same coefficients. This is an ellipse. You guess, so obviously it can't be a circle because you don't have the same coefficients. It's not the same in both the x and the y direction. Is it only for x? Let me say, say again. Is it only for x that would be an ellipse? Oh, if this had a 9 underneath, it would also be. I mean, as long as these coefficients are not the same. And that's a plus. It's an ellipse. Okay, I like it. Uh, I'll do that in a minute. Yeah, it's kind of related to what you said. All right, so real quick, do you guys see that that's not a circle? Can somebody tell me there still is a center? An ellipse still has a center. 
Where's the center for this one? Has this been shifted at all? Is there something inside with the X or inside with the Y? So where's the center? Zero, zero. Right, so center zero, zero, unless it's been shifted. So the center is at zero, zero. Now the question is, now the question is, how far does it get away from the center? Let me see if you guys can get this. This is really, really cool. All right, all right, here we go. You ready? I'm gonna ask you, it's kind of a weird question. What is the biggest that Y can be? What's the biggest value Y can have? Sing it. Why one? Why, why is it one? I like it. You're looking at me like, I don't know, man. Say again. Nope, there's no radius here. An ellipse has, well, an ellipse has a radius that's constantly changing, correct? It's not the same in every direction. That's why it's an ellipse, not a circle. So real quick, what's the smallest this term can be? No, 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 come on, come on. What's the smallest x squared can be? You could do it, come on. If I square x, I'm gonna get nothing but positive numbers, correct? Because we're only using, thank God we're not graphing complex numbers. You wanna start graphing the complex numbers and get all the colors? No. You could do this, you could do this. What's the smallest x squared could be then? Zero, yes? If I put a zero in, I get zero. Anything else I put in, I'm gonna get a positive number. Are you guys semi with me? If I wanna know the biggest thing this could be, I want to know the smallest this could be, because then that lets this be big. If this is something more than zero, this is less to make it one, yes? So if that's zero, y could be one or negative one. You can see that. So that in the y direction, I'm going to go up to one, down to negative one. What about this guy? What about this guy? You, you can do this too. I know you can do this. Again, if y is zero, this is going to be the biggest it could be. You kind of get that. The minute y is not zero, I'm adding something to this. This has to be smaller so that it comes out to be one still. So if I make that zero, that's the biggest it could be. So when is x squared divided by 4 equal to 1? When x is? 2 or negative 2. All right, so. We just figured out y goes between negative 1 and 1. x goes between negative 2 and 2. So here's what's really freaking cool about this shit. Um, underneath the y is a 1. You guys agree? That number, since it's with the y, that's the square of how far it can go. So 1 is 1 squared. It can go by 1 away. 4 is under the x squared. Square root of that is 2. That's how far x can get. It's amazing. And again, it's because if x is 2, y can't be anything. Because if x is 2, it already equals 1. I can't let y be. It has to be 0. I don't want you guys to get that. Can x be 3? If x is 3, what's this? Nine-fourths. Can I add something positive to nine-fourths to make it one? No. All right. So you see why it's kind of like a closed thing. I can't go outside of it because then I get to be too much. So what does this thing look like? Center is zero, zero. I go up and down one, and I go out two. I mean, please, please understand how simple ellipses are. That's all there are to them. That's all there is to it. What's the number with the x? Square root that, that's how far I go in the x. What's the number with the y? Square root it, that's how far I go in the y. It's almost too nice to believe. This number has to be a one. So what's the general form for an ellipse? The general form for an ellipse, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. A is how far I go in the x direction, 
B is how far I go in the Y direction. So can you guys graph this for me real quick? So what's A? Three. Right? Three is it's a distance, right? So yeah, you're right. I won't go to negative three and three, but three is a distance. What's B? Five. So I'm gonna get three away from the center in the x direction. I'm going to get five away from the center in the y direction. Do you understand how crazy nice that is? That is simple. That is like holy shit, yes. So how do I graph this? Well, the center is zero, zero, right? It's not shifted at all. I go three out on the x. And I go kabam, kabam. And I go five out. The Y. And then I get my crazy shit. Right? It's almost too nice to believe. Now, there's other stuff involved. You guys, so you guys understand how, you know, the earth rotates around the sun. The sun is like about right here. The earth rotates. This is kind of overstated. It's not this elliptical, but still. You guys know it's an elliptical orbit, right? So the sun is at one focus. There are actually two foci in every ellipse. Has anybody ever heard of a whispering room or an elliptical room? Um, okay, this is too cool to not say. Um, first, first, before I talk about that, how do I find out where these are? I would use c squared. In this case, it would be b squared minus a squared. I'm not going to make a big deal out of this. I just want you to know there is a way to find the foci. Using uh, And the way I remember it is this is a minus when this is a plus, and this is a plus when this is a minus. I'm not going to focus on the focus side. No pun intended. I'm not going to focus on the focus, okay? But I do want you to know one thing. Um, if I was in a room, an elliptically shaped room, if I stand at one focus and I whisper, and somebody else is standing at the other focus, they will hear me perfectly. Because every sound wave will bounce off the wall and go to the other focus. That is what the two foci kind of do. In fact, that's sort of related to the definition of an ellipse, um, which is a little too much to try to get into for the moment. But there are in some national parks, I know in DC there's some, and there's somewhere else I can't remember, but they have elliptical rooms. So they have a spot, two spots on the floor. So you stand on one spot and you go, hey man, how's it going? And then the other person over there is like, I don't care how much other stuff's going on. Those are the sound waves that hit them and they are not, are not canceled out. They come to them perfectly. It's crazy. So I'm like, has anybody ever heard of those before now? You're all like, dude, wait, I can't go to freaking National Park. Okay. Some of someone who was in the way. Say again? What if someone was in the way of that direction of whispering? Oh, sure, sure, sure. If you put, well, even then, the whole, I want you to realize that the whole room, like three-dimensionally, is elliptical. So the sound waves are bouncing off the ceiling, they're bouncing off the sides. So it's kind of hard to be really totally in the way. Okay. But sure, if somebody's like standing right next to you and stuff, then maybe. Okay. So maybe. Kind of crazy. Okay. All right. And if the entire surface was reflective and I shown a light all the light rays would collect at the other focus. It's kind of like related to 
not really, but like telescopes, and they have a focus, and that's where the light rays come, and that's where you put your camera, so you can collect all the light rays from what you're looking at. Okay, enough of that. So ellipses are pretty straightforward. Um, what's different about this one? It's been shifted, so where's the center? One, negative two, I love it. So let's see. One, negative two, there's the center, so you're just going to put a little T there. And then what's A? Four. What's B? Two. Two. So in the X direction, I'm going to go four away from the center. So it, even if it's shifted, it's not difficult. All right, so I'm just going to go four away from the center. One on, in the x direction, Jeff. Good job, buddy. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In the y direction, how far am I going to go? Two. One, two. One, two. There's my ellipse. Barely more difficult than the other one we did. Right? You just count from whatever the center is. Strangely simple, yes? Maybe? Not that bad. A decent thing to end the semester on, yes? Maybe? I don't know if you guys... So, look, I'm going to have to come in and mess everything up. Damn it! Okay, this is not that bad either. Let's see, let's see. All right. i got to not sell this so poorly. Um, Say again? I'm sorry? I can make it not equal to one. Well, if it's not equal to one, you just divide by whatever that is. No big deal. Yeah. Or, and plus, I could make this, you know, I could make this gross by making this five. Wouldn't that be gross? Yeah. Because then wouldn't this be square root of five? Then you have to count out by square root of five. I'm not going to, that's, you know, that's kind of silly. It's true. It could happen. But why would I make you do that by hand? Um, so here, here's what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. All right, let me think for a second. Okay, this should work. Can somebody tell me right now, is this a circle or an ellipse? Which one is this? Look at your x squared and your y squared. Do they have different coefficients or the same coefficients? The same. So which one is it? Circle. Because why is an ellipse not symmetric ver x versus y? Because it has different coefficients on the x squared and the y squared. So it moves differently in those directions. This one, same coefficients, is a circle. Can you tell me where the center is in this form? Nope. What form does it have to be in? So there's the equation of circle. Remember h and k from parabolas, maybe? And you're all like, dude, that's more than a reasonable question. Say again? Okay. Okay. Uh, so what do I have to do to make this look like that? One of our favorite processes. No. Complete the square. There's no like term. So let me make some room. Complete the square. Right, I've got to complete the square to make it look like that. Do you guys remember what has to go here? You guys remember that? Yeah. Half of negative four is negative two squared is. You guys remember the step? Half of negative four. Is negative two. Square negative two I get right here, four. So I'm gonna add a four. If I add a four there, I better 
Because I have two sides, I can just add four to the other side. I don't have to do that weird subtract four Indiana Jones shit, right? Okay. What about here? Half of six is where it is? Nothing. All right, let's see if Jeff made something good. So how do I factor this? Well, that's easy. Negative two, x minus two squared. How do I factor this? Half of six was three. Y plus three squared equals 12 plus four plus nine and five. Yay, Jeff! So what's the center of this? Yeah, center is two, negative three. And what's the radius? Five. So that would be, I'm not gonna make this graphic, but you could graph that pretty easy, right? Indicate the center and then go out five in all directions, right? How would I have made this an ellipse instead? What's the one thing I would have done that would have made this an ellipse? I could have put like a, a nine right there, right? So you see how you could tell it would be an ellipse then? Because the x squared and the y squared would not have the same coefficient, right? Yeah, like it. So, last thing for today, and then I'm gonna give you guys a, um, a little worksheet thing. Yeah. So tell me this. Um, I want to talk about, uh, I could have done this at the beginning, but I think this is fine. Um, this is going to seem totally unrelated. No, that's too bad. If I tell you I have two positive numbers, that add to four. Can somebody give me some answers? Three, three plus one. Two plus two. Say again. Is zero a positive number? Good try. What about one half plus? Three and a half. Right? Can either one of my numbers grow as much as it wants to? Can I make this 18? Why not? Because I would have to add a negative number, and that's not what it says I could do, right? So that is, I want you to see. Do you see how it's closed? Do you see how neither number can get to four, let alone bigger than four? Are you guys with me? So that's why ellipses and circles, they both have pluses in them, yes? Here's an ellipse. Here's a circle. They both have pluses, and aren't these both positive numbers, yes? Yes. So if I take two positive numbers and they add to be something, neither one can grow forever. They're both kind of contained. So that's why I get these shapes that are contained. Ellipses are contained. Circles are contained. What do I mean by contained? I don't know. What if I had two positive numbers and I was subtracting them? Subtract to be four. Give me two. Five and one. Five and one. Six and two. What about 104? Minus 100. Minus 100, right? What about one billion? Four. And six. And one billion and two. One billion and two. Is that closed? Can both of them grow as much as they want to? Yeah. Yes, but they can't get closer than four. So that's the opposite of this. So this subtraction, if I have an equation like this, you see, that's fundamentally different. It's not a circle. That's not an ellipse. This has got a minus. It's actually going to be hyperbolic. It's open. Do you guys see that? It's not closed. It's open because now each thing can grow. Can't Y grow as big as it wants to? Yeah. Woo! Can't X grow as, as little, as negative as it wants to, as positive as it wants to? It just can't get close. 
So we use hyperboles, hyperboles and ellipses to uh, in circle to talk about, for example, orbits of things. That's the immediate thing, right? Astronomy. Astronomy actually governed a lot of the early creation of mathematics. Um, so you have comets that have elliptical um, uh, orbits. You have uh, things that have hyperbolic orbits. So once they once they come by, they'll never come back again because <laughs> they're just in this big hyperbola. Uh, Halley's Comet it's got this. It doesn't come back. You guys know Halley's Comet? Yeah. Yes. You know, like Mark Twain was born when it was here, and then he died when he came back. <laughs> so, anyway, so just a little, you know, interesting factoid. So that's it. Keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. It's a big ellipse. Okay. So certain things are on hyperbolic trajectories. They come and then they go, and we never see them again. Right. All right. I'll stop. So let's look at hyperbolas, and then we'll call it a day. Hyperbolas are going to be just a little more complicated. They just are. Okay. But not that much more. We'll get to that. Um, so hyperbola looks exactly like an ellipse, except it has a minus in the middle instead of a plus. That's the only difference. Um, so let's say I have this. Yeah, so real quick, real quick, let me see if I can do this real quick. On the side, side note, if it was a plus, then it would be uh, an ellipse. How far would it go in the x direction? Three. Three. And the y direction? One. One. So it would look like this, correct? Yeah. So somehow, this is the opposite of that. And so, yeah, it's going to actually kind of do this kind of thing. But we want to see exactly how. So it's sort of like that ellipse just gets torn open. And now that it's torn open, these can go forever. I don't know if you guys see that. Take an ellipse, tear it open. And now these can just keep going. They're not contained. They can just go, yay, <laughs> right? I really want this to make sense. Okay. So watch this. Watch what I can do. Look what I can do. So what I did, center is 0, 0, right? It hasn't been shifted. So here's the center. I'm going to go out. I'm going to pretend like it's sort of an ellipse. I'm going to go out three. Out three. Out three. Now here's this is going to get a little weird. So my ellipse would be here, correct? Okay. So here we go. Here we go. This gets a little bit trippy. I want to tear it open, but I have to let this grow in a certain Way. So there's a really cool graphical method to do this. Make a rectangle. Okay. Oh shit. And real quick, can you guys tell me? Can, can somebody see? Are there any y intercepts to this? How would you check to see if there are y intercepts? What would you do? You would make x zero. Is there any answers to that? Negative positive number equals one. Isn't that what that says? Negative positive number equals one. Is there anything that would answer that? Shit, no. <laughs> There's no positive number that I can make negative and the answer is one. Are you guys with me? There are no y-intercepts. But there are x-intercepts, right? You can solve that. In fact, what are the x-intercepts? x squared over nine equals one. x squared equals nine. Three. And negative three, correct? That's why I made these open circles. How can I tell this sits on the x-axis? Because the x squared piece is positive. Oops. Okay. So there's a little more involved to hyperbolas. Right. So watch this. All right, all right, all right. Next thing you do, we're almost done, thankfully, is you draw lines through the corners from the center. And they act like, and they are, they don't just act like, they are asymptotes. So my hyperbola ends up looking like this. They act just like asymptotes. See that? Yes, and the asymptote, of course, goes to infinity, right? right? Both in the y and the x direction. 
Funkadelic. So, it, and do you see how this would be the associated ellipse? So I've just torn that open and let it grow. Yeah? I don't know, do you guys see that? That's what I wish I would have been told when I was learning about ellipses, because that's it's really kind of cool if you think about it like that. This is contained. So I put a minus, now they can now I can do this and they can grow as big as they want to. Really kind of cool. Now watch this. What if the equation had been this instead? You see how it's basically the same, except now there's no x-intercept, right? Then my hyperbola would have just been up here and down here. It would have sat on the y-axis. So which axis does a hyperbola sit on the axis that had the term is positive? Okay. So when I make this box, it could either be here. That would be if the y is positive, then it sits on the y-axis. If the x was positive, it sits on the x-axis. So of course, you know, I mean, this is already hard enough, but I could shift it, yes? Mm -hmm. And shifting it really doesn't make this that much harder. You just find the center and then you just count from the center and you make your box around the center. Just the center moves, that's all. All the work stays the same. So instead of doing everything from here, I would have done it from somewhere else. Count, 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 make my little box, blah, 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 blah. Everything's the same, it just moves first. Maybe so let me give you this. So I, I'll tell you this, uh, I can't remember if parabolas are in there. Um, I should have put circles up there, but that's okay. Uh, don't worry about parabolas. I don't think parabolas are actually in here. I'll do another double check. They might be, in which case. Good. Well, it's in 12 proof. Okay. So, I'm not worried about 12 proof. Just worry about 12 and 12 proof. So, forget about the parabolas. Uh, I should have put circles up there and I didn't think about it. Um, there's your ellipses. There's hyperbolas. I get a little more detail about asymptotes and all that. I really don't currently care too much about those. I just want you to be able to graph these things. Are you with me? But just in case you're curious, I gave you a few extra pieces of information. Um, okay, so real quick, on the back, as conic sections practice, um, I give you three problems there. Which one of those three is the circle? Number, which one? Three. Three. Which one is definitely not a circle or an ellipse? Why two? Because it has a negative, right? What's the only one that has a minus sign in it? Hyperbolus. Yes? And of course, number one then must be an ellipse. And how do you tell? Because it's got a plus sign, and the coefficient of the x and y pieces are different, right? The x one is 1 ninth, the y one is 1 25th. So it's going to move differently in the x and the y direction. The third one, the x squared piece and the y squared piece, have the same coefficient. They both have a coefficient of 1. So it's going to move the same in those two directions. That's why it comes out circular. Okay, maybe. Um, since we just did hyperbolas, try to do number 2. Yeah. Or sit there and don't do anything. It's up to you. So try to do number 2. And then we'll call it a day.
Oh, full size. Yeah, don't worry about full size. My fault. Yeah. Don't worry about the full size. There's not enough size. Full size. No, no, the quiz actually goes pretty far back in time from the last test we took. So the quiz tomorrow is going to be law of cosines oh, yeah. and uh, polar coordinates. Yeah. So the last test we took stock ash law of sines. does this sit on? The y-axis. The y-axis. So it's going to look like this. Right? It's going to sit on the y-axis, right? Oh, yeah. Huh? Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, vertices. Yeah, don't quit your day job. Vertices. Well, all right. We'll talk about vertices in a second, but it sits on the y-axis. So actually, let's talk about it right now. How far does it go on the y-axis? Four. 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 And on the x-axis? One. one. So the vertices are actually going to be 0, 4, 0, negative 4, right? If it sat on the x-axis, the vertices would be the points on the x-axis. So the vertices are 0, plus or minus 4. And of course, the center is where? 0, 0. It hasn't been shifted at all, right? So number 2, center is 0, 0. On the, in the y direction, I go 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are actual points on the graph. In the x direction, I go 1, 1. Those are not points on the graph, so I just put open circles. And then I can make my little, my little rectangle. This is a little bit of a narrow rectangle, so let's see. I want to make my little asymptotes. By hand, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then, and then I just have to do this. Now just to show you, if you wanted to figure out what the foci, if you wanted to figure out what the foci were, it's c squared equals a squared plus b squared. a squared is 16. b squared is 1. So c is the square root of 17. That's roughly 4 point something. So the foci will always be kind of like inside the curve. So one focus is here and the other focus is down there. Say again? Plus or minus, yeah. plus or minus four points, something or other. So just a little bit past four. So it's always going to be, the closer the focus is to the actual hyperbola, the tighter the curve is. I always think about it like a bowling ball shot at somebody's torso. Don't, as it gets closer, don't you go, oh shit, it's coming. Right, so I always think about that. So if the focus was way up here, it'd be really fat. 
the focus is way over here, it'd be really big. Whoa. The closer that focus gets, the tighter it gets. <laughs> Crazy shit. No, the closer the focus gets to the thing, the tighter that, that curve's gonna be. Right? So for an ellipse, um, real quick, this is let's see if this makes sense. For an ellipse, the foci are here and here. The closer they are to the center, the more circular it gets, because a circle has one focus right in the middle. If I tear that up into two, then I start to make this elliptical shape. And as I push them out further, it gets really tighter. <laughs> as I push them towards the center to try to make them become one, it becomes more circular. And again, that's more than I intended to talk about foci, but foci do have all these purposes. In the solar system, the sun would be at one focus as we rotate around. Okay, maybe. Maybe. That's a lot in one day, but we have tomorrow. We got that quiz tomorrow, first thing. We'll do some more examples of these. Um, and then we'll start, we'll probably start to do some review for the final uh, at the end, of, uh, towards the end of class tomorrow. And then Thursday is going to be nothing but final exam review. Okay, that's plenty. Yeah.